How do we choose a life partner is a topic that young people frequently ask me. How can I know whether this is the one for me? Should I make a decision or will God reveal it to me? Hi everyone, my name is Sunita Prasad. I'm here to speak on the topic choosing your life partner. If you are blessed by your videos, request you to like and subscribe. This will encourage us to make more videos on youth, marriage, parenting and other family related topics. After salvation, selecting a life partner is among the most crucial decisions you will make. This choice could have a significant impact on your future. This decision can make or break your life. So young men and women, I encourage you to make a wise decision and choose wisely. When you choose a marital partner, you commit to that person the rest of your life. The Bible calls it a covenant relationship. You shouldn't approach it with the mindset, oh, let's see if it works or else we can get a divorce later. Divorce is not in God's plan. God declares in the book of Malachi that he hates divorce, but he has to permit it because of our hardness of heart. It wasn't part of God's original scheme. The topic I've mentioned is choosing your life partner. It implies that a decision is required of us. In most cases, we don't hear a voice saying, this is your princess, marry her, or you don't get a vision of the person's face with the words, marry him, or see their name appear in front of us. These can occur, but they are rare insights and exceptions. They are not the norm. In general, we choose the person, but God will guide us, instruct us, direct us, counsel us and help us if we ask him. Although the Bible does not provide us with a precise or direct rule for choosing, it does provide us with biblical and spiritual guidelines to choose. I would like to highlight five considerations that are crucial to making the right choice when picking a life mate. The first one is, before you look out, look within. We frequently neglect to be the best for the other person because we are too preoccupied looking for the ideal match. By the way, there is no such thing as ideal human being. Don't look for flawless people since no one is perfect. There won't be any. It's crucial that you examine yourself and identify your areas of improvement. Make a list of things you need to improve in your life. It can be anger issues, resentment, selfishness, sloth, baggage from the past, abuse and so on. It will be a recipe for catastrophe if you bring all your old issues into your marriage. In order to be the best version of yourself for your future spouse, focus on the things you need to improve on and get help and counselling in the areas you are unable to conquer. Although none of us are perfect, God's words commands us to be holy because He is holy. Every day we can improve. We are still developing. The issue arises when you don't even recognize the places where work needs to be done or when you become defensive and refuse to acknowledge your need for help in those areas. So the first step in deciding is to strive to be your best self. Second one is make a list of what is negotiable and what is not. When it comes to the ideal girl or ideal gentleman, we all have aspirations dreams and expectations. It's fine, but we need to have reasonable expectations rather than exaggerated or unrealistic ones. In order to do that, you should have a non-negotiable list, something you wouldn't or shouldn't compromise on. Faith was one of my non-negotiables. I didn't want to compromise on wanting a partner who loved the Lord and walked in his face. I didn't want to compromise on this. I request you to make this as your absolute non-negotiable. Do not be unequally yoked is a commandment that is extremely explicit in the Bible. The second in my non-negotiable list was godly character. I found these two virtues in the man I married. By God's grace, our 20 years of marriage have been a fruitful adventure. I encourage you to compile a list of your own non-negotiables. Just those that you absolutely cannot compromise on. Don't have too many of them. A list that is negotiable is one where you're willing to make concessions while having preferences. For me personally, pay, 
size and height were all negotiable unfortunately a lot of people make their decisions mostly based on the looks color property positions government job salary dowry jewelry and based on if the person is well settled these don't even matter for a healthy and successful marriage the third one is compatibility a marriage cannot be sustained by love alone you must determine your compatibility with one another in amos 3:3 it is mentioned can pe- two people walk together if they are not in agreement to agree here refers to compatibility your level of agreeability is referred to as compatibility here similarity in beliefs about god money life parenting are all very essential well there may be some differences a marriage can suffer if there are significant ones if one's life calling is in bangalore urban and the other is called to be a missionary in africa it will not work out if one wants to go to church other doesn't it can create issues if one wants children and other does not it will not work even if all ideologies are not the same if they are teachable it can be managed better in general for a happy marriage compatibility in the key areas is crucial fourth one is watch for warning signs this is what i observed after counseling young couples you need to observe warning signs that can be evident while choosing signs of immaturity if the person is very immature not able to healthily handle and resolve even small issues then it is a warning sign signs of lack of preparedness some people are not even ready for marriage they may have consented only under parental pressure or for other self serving reasons signs of character weakness character flaws include a weakness for the other sex some significant addictions or uncontrollable behavior signs of parental control and dependence as an adult you should not be unhealthily dependent on your parents marriage rightfully cuts the umbilical cord the bible does command us to respect honor and value our parents which we should do however it is not good to let your parents dominate and control you and becoming dependent on them is a red flag The fifth one is count the cost. The Bible in Luke chapter 14 verses 28 says, "So suppose one of you wants to build a house, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? A wise person before building will first count the cost. In the same way, be wise and count the cost first. Look at all the angles before making a decision." Do not compromise on the most important details. Find out more about the person, most importantly whether or not he or she loves Jesus. Ask some crucial and necessary questions. A decision should not be made hastily. Consider the following aspects before selecting a choice: your faith, education, age, finances, family history, social life, health calling goals past life and personality type how do i know if it is god's will many of you ask me let me sum up by advising you to choose a life mate after giving it careful and prayerful consideration we have the holy spirit to guide us we have the word of god to regulate our decision we have parents or elders to give us sense and advice we have pastors and mentors to give godly counsel we have the anointing of god to discern spirits and finally we have been given the brain 171 billion cells so please put your head over heart and choose your life partner carefully thoughtfully and wisely i would like to end with this verse from psalm 32:8 i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go I will counsel you with my eye upon you may the lord guide you direct you counsel you in making the right decision god bless you